The Transverse Ligament Test by Chelsea Micko and Amanda Osborne. The transverse ligament maintains contact between the dens and the anterior arch of the atlas, creating a pivot joint. It prevents posterior displacement of the dens onto the spinal cord. Properties of the transverse ligament include a thick band extending between the tubercles on the medial surface of the lateral mass of the atlas. It contributes to one of two independent articulations in synovial joints occurring between the back of the dens and the transverse ligament. And it forms a cross called the cruciform ligament of the atlas as a superior band extends from the middle of the transverse ligament up to the foramen magnum and an inferior band extends downward to the back of the atlas. Biomechanics of the transverse ligament include a component of the median atlantoaxial joint. It makes a uniaxial joint. It contributes primarily rotation, such as when the head shakes no. The dens of the axis can act as a pivot point for the atlas and the skull to turn around, and the amount of rotation is limited by the alar ligaments. In addition, the atlantoaxial joint also contributes flexion and extension by acting as a fulcrum. The purpose of the transverse ligament test is to screen for upper cervical stability and provide a ligamentous assessment. Here the integrity of the transverse ligament is tested with an anterior shear applied at C1 on C2. If compromised, the dens will compress the spinal cord and create symptoms. Psychometrics for this test have not yet been established, and the diagnostic value of this test is currently unknown. Prior to testing, it is important to screen for vertebral artery insufficiency risk factors. These include age and gender. Men have a higher risk before the age of 75. Women have a high risk after the age of 75. Any cardiovascular history, such as smoking, hypertension, or high cholesterol. Body mass index is important. Family history. And any reports from the patient about vertigo and or vision changes. These are common symptoms associated with vertebrobasilar insufficiency. Indications for testing the transverse ligament include a history of neck trauma, patient report of their head feeling heavy, and the presence of the following signs or symptoms, a lump in the throat, lip paresthesia, nausea, vomiting, severe headache, dizziness, and muscle spasms. Contraindications and precautions include confirmed upper cervical instability, vertebral artery insufficiency, osteoporosis or osteopenia, and a history of cancer. Patient populations who are expected to have ligament laxity include pregnant women, Down syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and hypermobility syndrome. In order to perform the transverse ligament test, the patient should be in supine. While sitting or standing next to them, place your palms on the occiput and palpate for the spinous process of C2 with your index fingers. Next, palpate the C1 transverse processes. You'll find them between the angle of the mandible and the mastoid process. When ready, lift directly upward on the transverse processes of C1 while supporting the head, and hold this position for 15 to 20 seconds. It's important to maintain the head parallel to the ceiling but in slight flexion. Gravity will work to stabilize the remainder of the cervical spine against the table. It is at this time you should assess the patient's change in symptoms. Now let's see what that looks like. I'm rolling. Hi Chelsea. Hi. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm a physical therapy student. Um, and wanted to see, I see you've uh, had some complaints of headache lately. Can you tell me a little bit about why, why you're here? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I had a fall um, about two months ago down like half a flight of stairs, um, but and I had imaging. I'm fine, no break, no fracture. But I've had I've had yeah a really bad headache. My head just kind of feels heavy, um, like tight muscle neck muscles. Um, yeah. Okay, so before we do any other tests, I want to make sure that one of the ligaments in your neck is intact, and that's the transverse ligament. Okay. Only reason being is it can cause some, some neurological symptoms if the, that ligament isn't working to hold the joint in place. Okay. You can have some compression of the spinal cord. And I just want to clear that before we do any, any treatment. So um, you were, your x-rays were unremarkable, so that's good. We can probably proceed with the test. Just want to make sure you don't have any osteoporosis, no. osteopenia, anything like that. No. And no, no current cancer. No. Okay, great. So before I have you lay down, I want to tell you a little bit about the test. I'm just going to be palpating some joints in your neck, and I'll be lifting up on one of your vertebrae. Okay. So we're going to be holding that position for about 10 to 20 seconds. I want you to let me know if you ever feel like you're numb in your face, okay. feel like you're dizzy, nauseated, any any kind of strange sensation, I want you to let me know. Okay. And of course, if it's uncomfortable at any point, let me know. Okay. I also need you to keep your eyes open and try to look at me because I'm going to be looking at what's going on with your eyes. Okay. Okay? okay. Any questions? No. Great. I'm going to have you lay down then. All right, Chelsea, I'm just going to be putting my hands in here. I'm feeling for your first vertebrae the transverse processes which are on the side and I'm on there right on them right now so I'm gonna be lifting straight up with your head are you ready okay coming up so I'm just lifting up on that first vertebrae looking at your eyes to see if there's any any strange movements how are you feeling feeling good okay yeah. good no change in sensation in your face no dizziness no nope. great I'm just going to stay here for another couple of seconds just to make sure that no symptoms appear. Okay. Great. Go ahead and lower you back down. So based on those symptoms, it seems like the ligament is intact. Um, I would expect there to be some change in sensation in your face or some, some strange sensation. So we can plan your treatment around that. It seems like your ligament is intact, which is great. Okay. A positive test is indicated by the signs of cord compression. These include weakness, numbness, nystagmus, diaphoresis or excessive sweating, nausea, vomiting, perception of a lump in one's throat and or difficulty swallowing, facial paresthesia, and double vision. Following a positive test, the appropriate course of action is as follows. Referral to a physician for additional imaging, prescription of a cervical collar, which is optional and should only be done after considering the patient's quality of life and health beliefs, and if comfortable, continuing to treat the patient with physical therapy. The physical therapist will want to be mindful of patient positions, use only gentle pressures, no manipulations, and avoid provocative maneuvers. An alternative to the transverse ligament test is the sharp purser test. The sharp purser test is to be performed with the patient in sitting. First the patient flexes their upper cervical spine and reports any cord compression signs and or the hearing or feeling of a clunk. Any local symptoms such as soreness, can be ignored. If there are no serious signs or symptoms, the physical therapist may proceed with the test. Next, with the patient's head slightly flexed, the PT will stabilize C2 posteriorly and apply a posterior force to the patient's forehead using the palm of their hand. A positive test is indicated by the reduction of cord compression signs and or the feeling of a clunk. The psychometrics for the sharp purser test include a predictive value of 85%, sensitivity of 88% when subluxation is greater than 4 millimeters, and specificity of 96%. This test has been deemed clinically useful to diagnose atlantoaxial instability. The clunk felt during a positive test 
is proposed to be C1 realignment after an anterior atlantoaxial subluxation. The validity for this test has been established in the rheumatoid arthritis population. Currently, controversy surrounds upper cervical spine stability tests. Following a review, no correlation between the measure of hypermobility and presence of neurological symptoms could be found. As a result, the validity of these tests is questionable. Furthermore, the validity of radiological exams is also under debate. X-rays have been deemed not reliable diagnostic tools, and although CT scans and MRIs are better, they are not the standard of care.